starting today's video in southern Wyoming, the Blufflands of southern Wyoming. Now, while not one of the most physically spectacular places you've ever seen, this is one of the wildlife corridors of America. There are more mule deer here and more pronghorn antelope than just about anywhere else on the globe. The reason why we ended up here though isn't just because of that. The reason why is because we're heading to a national landmark that is one of the coolest feats of human engineering the world has ever seen. And we're headed that way right now. We'll talk more a little bit about it. I gotta find my way down this cliff without falling. One second. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! The place we are headed to today is very probably known by you, but not many people have been there. It is Mount Rushmore of South Dakota. <laughs> I knew all about it. Oh, Mount Rushmore when I was growing up, but I'd never been to South Dakota and I'd never seen how pretty it actually was. Last time I was there, I actually almost got arrested. <laughs> I'll tell that story another day. So I never filmed a YouTube video on this. This will be my first time showing you one of my favorite, most awestruck sites in America. And I'm so excited for it. And even better, they're completing a brand new statue next to Mount Rushmore called Crazy Horse. And we're gonna talk all about that as well. It's even bigger than Mount Rushmore, if that was even possible. I haven't seen it yet. And we're gonna go check it out together. Here we go. Starting this trip here in uh, Wind Cave National Park, South Dakota. Just got in. This is one of the most underrated states in the country for sure. South Dakota has some beautiful places and you can look and see, I don't know how well you can see them in the GoPro. There are probably like 50 little prairie dogs out here on both sides of the road. You can hear them. <laughs> There's little warning shots. Look at them, man. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, so this is super cool. Now, if you look around at some of the plains right here, like this is what the American West would have been most like when Lewis and Clark came across the country. And it's just like rolling, beautiful hills. There were bison by the thousands, prairie dogs everywhere you looked. It's just wildlife paradise. Oh my gosh, man. And this is called Wind Cave National Park for a reason. There are caves here. They call them wind caves because the natives used to hear the wind whistling through the caves and they're like, dude, there's a demon living in there. <laughs> like the roars of the wind. So we're gonna go see if we can find our way into one of those. Here we go. This door right here is what makes Wind Cave National Park so exciting. I've been to this area of the country before, never been here. Wind Caves is famous for the cave underneath this all right here <laughs> there's a cave under here but the elevators are broken until october it's august right now 2023 if you come the entrance to the caves is or the fee for the entrance to the caves is about 45 bucks uh, it's something i would totally do for this video if the elevators were open but i can still show you one of kind of the more spiritual sites i've ever been to out here on the road and this is the breath of life entrance to the caves so this is the largest natural entrance to the wind caves and as you can see from the sign i just got told this story from a park ranger inside this is the place that gave birth to a nation the lakota indian people believe in their original beliefs oh my gosh you could feel the wind coming out i don't know you can't i don't have long hair so you can't see it blowing but this wind cave is called the breath of life because the lakota people believe their first ancestors came from below the earth right here it was all dark and then a beam of light came down from above and they rose up to walk the modern world right here and this is where it all started look like an entire nation that whole gave birth to an entire belief system an entire religion of an entire nation of people which is spectacular to be able to sit here alone and like this is one of the hidden gems of culture in America and you could feel the wind coming out of the breath of life man that is so incredible I feel like I should almost be whispering out of respect right here but this is amazing so I'm gonna stand up and give that place some space because I feel like like maybe I shouldn't be filming it like too much talking too loud I don't know it's like kind of spiritual but this is a magnificent start 
to this wind cave trip. We're in Mount Rushmore uh, territory right now. I've never been specifically to Wind Cave National Park. It's my first visit and I have a feeling it's just gonna get better. Next stop, we have Custer State Park, uh, which once again, I've never been to and do not know what to expect. Oh Here we go. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There's a bison herd coming right across the road. Oh my gosh. Oh my, do you see? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Hi. <laughs> there are bison right on the road and there's a massive herd over here. This is the most bison I have ever seen in my life. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, and they have babies, so you gotta be real careful driving next to them. But look at these guys. Look at them. I mean, <laughs> this is Custer State Park, too. Oh my gosh, dude. How spectacular. Have you ever seen so many bison in one place in your life? Because I haven't. I have never seen this many bison. This is just stunning. Oh my gosh. So I don't know how it works, but bison are a migratory species that will wander everywhere, so which is probably why they have these fences up, so they don't wander into the cities. But Oh, this is one of the biggest bison I think I've ever seen coming our way right now. Oh my gosh. Okay, all right, I'm gonna let me compose myself real quick. So these are mostly woodland bison here in South Dakota. You go to Yellowstone, you're looking at more plains bison. They're a little bit bigger typically, a little bit less uh, tufty fur. Like you can see this guy coming around. He almost looks like he has a mane. Like this is just a beast of an animal how much fur they have on the front and all this stuff. Oh my gosh, what an animal, man. That thing is amazing. You're awesome, dude. Like this is big alpha male. The plains bison you'll see in Yellowstone are still bigger than these guys, but these guys are just amazing. I think that's all I can compose myself to say right now. This is one of the coolest. Oh my gosh. So this is Custer. I was right. It's just going to keep getting better. Wind cave and now that's Custer State Park. And now we're on to the next. <laughs> Look at him. Ah. So I had a pretty awesome day driving through Wind Cave and Custer so far, but right before I head into town and get ready for some dinner before heading to Crazy Horse and Mount Rushmore tomorrow, I gotta show you this view right here because no one ever thinks about this when they think of South Dakota. This is South Dakota, one of the most hated states in all of America because nobody knows this exists. This is the Black Hills, man, and it's forest, and it's mountain lions, and it's bison, and it's wild, and it's cowboys. This place is freaking epic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at it. Oh. So before you write South Dakota off your bucket list travel location, just take a, take a look at this. Take a look at this place. There we go. It's wild. Let's go get some dinner and we'll clean it up with a few monuments tomorrow morning that I am very excited about. Here we are the next morning at the coolest monument in America. If you haven't been here yet, watch very closely because this monument is going to make waves across the world when it's finished 30 to 50 years from now. Here at Crazy Horse National Memorial, 
in South Dakota. You can see it up here behind me. And this place has got to be one of the most inspiring stories I think I've ever heard. Oh man, where do we even start? So somewhere in like 1940, a man named Korchak was approached to be able to carve out this mountain into the Crazy Horse Memorial. Why Crazy Horse? Crazy Horse was a chief of the Lakota Indian people that was never known to have touched a pen or signed a treaty when the U.S. Uh, government back in the early 1900s came across to the West and started wiping out Native Americans and taking all their land from them. This man was the wild child that fought to the very end until he was stabbed. He was bayoneted by an American soldier. So why are we building this <laughs> memorial today? I, I think there's two reasons for it. One, to embody the heart and spirit of the Native American, the fighter that they were in the, their culture. But second, to remind the white man, the, our ancestors and us today of the mistakes that we have made as conquerors over the time. So it's really interesting, really quite amazing. It's not a completed memorial yet. It will be probably in another 30 to 50 years, something ridiculous like that. But when it's done, it'll be something like 600 feet tall, 500 feet long. Uh, just unbelievable and this huge front of the mountain is actually going to turn into a huge horse's head that crazy horse is riding and it is freaking phenomenal Korchak by the way I should say the guy that took on this project uh, refused federal funding twice he refused two ten million dollar funding operations from the federal government in fear that they would not actually complete the project so this entire thing here is run by Korchak and his family. So the grandchildren of Korchak today are still up there on the mountain building this thing as it goes year by year. So this is not a federal government uh, project. This was a personal project done by Korchak, who's now dead and who's continuing it on with his family to finish this horse and give Native Americans a memorial they can remember for the rest of history. The, the monument is spectacular, but the, the story, truly spectacular. Probably one of the most inspiring stories I've ever heard. To be able to take on a project you knew you wouldn't be able to finish in your lifetime. There's a smaller model of uh, what it'll look like when it's done up here. So I'm going to show, show you that. So here is a scale model of what the mountain will look like when it's done. And you can see it in the background right here. That's the real thing. And this is what it will look like when it's done. Unreal. So this has been the Crazy Horse Memorial. Uh, this is spectacular. <laughs> Now, uh, that means we only have one place left to see here in the Black Hills, and that is Mount Rushmore, uh, which I have seen before, but it's one of the things that you have to see twice to be able to take in all the grandeur and how magnificent it is. I actually think Crazy Horse is going to be much bigger, but Mount Rushmore is still an American staple that everyone has to see. So we're going there tomorrow. Tonight, though, I got an invite from an unexpected old friend, my old high school basketball coach, to come out to his brother's mansion here in the Black Hills. So we're gonna drive out there tonight and go have dinner with them, catch up. They're not huge technology YouTube guys, so I'm not gonna film a ton out of respect for them, but I'll show you a couple pictures of the property. And if they want to, I'll let them introduce themselves to you as well. So we'll see how that goes, but I think it'll be great. And tomorrow is Mount Rushmore. Here we go. No, I'm not a <laughs> okay. Here we go. First time in the town. You, your Instagram, you can huh? be on, yeah. Right. How do you feel about that? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. All right. Always Let's wonder, go. Always wondered how you Gosh. <laughs> Now that I know what to expect a little bit now. That won't scare me as bad next time. <laughs> the amount of 
connections I've made so randomly across the country is ridiculous at this point. Kent Lease and I have not seen each other for years. Back when I was on his basketball team, I played point guard and I could handle the rock and I was shooting baskets and I really wanted to be a division one college basketball player. I got injured and ended up going across the country to hitchhike across America. And that's what started this whole journey. And now I get to go meet up with him again after years and go with him and his brother flying through the woods on this awesome little four by four thing. Like, it's amazing how life works out when you just choose to go without any real plans. You just, like, this is what you want and you go for it. And the most amazing things happen. If we have one of these, I would be so excited to get lost, okay? So we keep getting to go. Uh, Whoa! Oh, that's an L! That's, that was a, L. that's a L! <laughs> Oh! You gotta get that on camera. I'm looking for it right and, now. And there's a couple. Oh, here them. they come! No way! What's up, guys? What's up? There they are. Oh my gosh! You can see them in there, right there. Yeah. Good morning from Pacticola Reservoir here in South Dakota. You got to see me hang out a little bit with the guys go on the ATV last night, which was a ton of fun. This morning I'm headed to Mount Rushmore, but on the way I wanted to stop, jump in for a quick swim, and I wanted to show you this as well, just to show you that South Dakota is not the wasteland that we've been taught to believe it is. North Dakota and South Dakota actually have some spectacularly beautiful places where there's a boat <laughs> with someone tubing behind it right now in this forested lake here in South Dakota of all places who knew so today we're going to Mount Rushmore which is one of the coolest monuments in the country crazy horse was one of the most impactful I've ever been to but Mount Rushmore is a complete monument that is a testament to American history that I hope is around for many many centuries to come and I'm gonna go show you it right now I think we're about 30 miles outside so should see you in just a second here peace this is it we are here yeah. mount rushmore national memorial in left to right order the four faces on the wall are george washington thomas jefferson teddy roosevelt and abraham lincoln uh first president thomas jefferson i think of him as like kind of the scholar president i don't remember what number he was uh, Teddy Roosevelt was like the conservationist, my personal favorite president. I uh, protected a ton of nature, and Abraham Lincoln was the man who freed the slaves and led our country through the Civil War. Quite amazing. We'll go a little bit closer in a second, but I'm going to hop in inside and show you this place first. I just sat through two and a half hours worth of Zoom calls here at the base of mount rushmore but if there's a better place to take zoom calls in the world i don't know what it is <laughs> this monument is so cool i wanted to tell you the story about this place before i ended up in finishing this video though is this is the only place in america where i have almost been arrested see really good advice for you if you're listening to this and you're like man i really want to go to mount rushmore and you're kind of a little crazy adventurer like i am you can't hike this thing you cannot hike this thing it is illegal that's what i did last time i was here i got caught on camera by like some area 51 style fences way up here somewhere on the corner you can go up to the top of this rock there's actually a rock climbing route that i'm pretty sure is also illegal with like a rope and everything you can climb up to the top of this and look out at the heads and uh, a guy came out there after me and started chasing me it's some of the most intense hiking you'll ever do as well so i took three steps and I jumped off this cliff. This guy had a gun in the forest, was chasing me. And uh, I thought he was going to kill me. So I jumped off this cliff over here and blacked out when I hit the ground. And I just must have kept going because I ran all the way down here and almost like probably a mile down uh, towards the highway and came all the way back around, got to the car and headed out. So long story short, don't hike Mount Rushmore unless you're feeling really risky. There is a secret rock climbing route up here on this pillar right here that you can go test if you want. It's really, really fun. But I mean, 
mean, just coming to look at it, it's pretty marvelous, is it not? Absolutely awesome. So that's going to finish it up for me here. I'm going to head over to the East Coast now. Got a lot of driving to do, a few thousand miles before we go to Boston and fly up to Iceland to film the next YouTube video up there. So it'll be really fun right now. Stay wild, be free. Click the link in the bio if you want to subscribe to my email list. I'll see you later.